We are looking for all integers and an m, such that the nth triangular number is a perfect square. This problem seems simple, but its solution reveals a deep and elegant mathematical structure. First, we need to rearrange this equation into a more structured form. Our goal is to eliminate the fraction and see if a recognizable pattern emerges. We begin with the original equation. To clear the denominator, we will multiply both sides by 2. This gives us in times the quantity and plus 1 equals 2 times m squared. The standard approach for this problem involves a clever algebraic manipulation to complete the square. To do this, we will first multiply by 4. Multiplying both sides by 4 yields. 4 in times the quantity and plus 1 equals 8m squared. Now let's distribute the 4 and on the left side. This gives 4 in squared plus 4 in. The expression on the left is very close to a perfect square. To complete it, we need to add 1 to both sides. Adding 1 to both sides maintains the equality. The left side is now the square of 2 and plus 1. This simplification is the key insight. To reveal the final structure, we subtract 8m squared from both sides. This brings us to a remarkable equation. Let's define new integer variables to simplify this. Let x equal 2 and plus 1, and let y equal m. This is an instance of Pell's equation, a famous Diophantine equation. Finding integer solutions to our original problem is equivalent to finding integer solutions to this equation. Before we solve this, notice a crucial property. If x were even, then x squared would be divisible by 4. Since 8y squared is also divisible by 4, the entire left side would be divisible by 4. But it equals 1, a contradiction. Therefore, x must be odd, which guarantees that n equals x minus 1 over 2 is always an integer. This establishes the exact correspondence between our two problems. Pell's equations have a well-known method of solution. We must first find the smallest non-trivial integer solution, known as the fundamental solution. We are looking for integers x and y that satisfy this. By inspection, if y equals 0, x squared equals 1, so x equals 1. This is the trivial solution. Let's test y equals 1. Substituting y equals 1 into the equation. First, let's simplify the constant term. 1 squared is 1, so this becomes x squared minus 8 equals 1. Now, to isolate the x squared term, we add 8 to both sides. This gives us x squared equals 9. Finally, we take the square root of both sides to solve for x. Since we are looking for positive integer solutions, x equals 3. Our fundamental solution is x equals 3, y equals 1. Because this is the solution with the smallest positive x greater than 1, we call it the fundamental solution. All other positive integer solutions can be generated from this one. Here's the beautiful key insight. All solutions, x sub k, y sub k, are generated by taking integer powers of the expression 3 plus the square root of 8. This single formula unlocks everything. This works because solutions to Pell's equation have a beautiful multiplicative structure, corresponding to units in a number field. If we have two solutions, their product gives another solution. This multiplicative closure means that powers of the fundamental unit generate all positive solutions. From this master formula, we can derive other useful computational tools. Explicit formulas for any term. x sub k equals the sum of the conjugate powers divided by 2, and y sub k equals the difference of the conjugate powers divided by 2 root 8. These guarantee integer results. Let's generate the first few solutions for x, y, and then convert them back to solutions for n, m. For k equals 0, we get the trivial solution, x sub 0, y sub 0, equals 1, 0. For k equals 1, we recover the fundamental solution, 3, 1. For k equals 2, 
we expand the square to get 17 plus 6 times the square root of 8. This gives the solution 17, 6. For ak equals 3, we find the solution 99, 35. This process continues indefinitely. We can also derive efficient recurrences to compute solutions step by step. The first order recurrences directly follow from the multiplicative structure. Each new solution depends linearly on the previous one. We can also derive a second order recurrence for y. Each term equals 6 times the previous term minus the term before that. Similarly for n, but with an additional constant term of 2 due to the transformation n equals x minus 1 over 2. Now we translate these x, y pairs back to our original variables n and m using the substitutions we defined. Recall that n equals the quantity x minus 1 all divided by 2, and m is simply equal to y. There is an exact one-to-one -one correspondence between integer solutions of our original triangular number equation and solutions to Pell's equation. For n to be an integer, x minus 1 must be an even number, which means x must be odd. Our solutions for x, which are 1, 3, 17, and 99, are all odd, so this condition holds. Since our original equation involves m squared, both positive and negative values of m give the same result. Therefore, for each Pell solution y, we get m equals plus or minus y. The trivial solution gives n sub 0 m sub 0 equals 0, 0. The fundamental solution gives n equals 1, and since m is squared, m can be plus or minus 1. The next solution gives n equals 8 and m equals plus or minus 6. And for decay equals 3, we find n equals 49 and m equals plus or minus 35. Let's quickly verify our solution for n equals 8. The eighth triangular number is 8 times 9 divided by 2, which is 36. And 36 is indeed 6 squared. The result holds. Let's verify another solution. For n equals 49, the triangular number is 1225, which equals 35 squared. Excellent. The problem asks for all integer solutions. We must consider negative values for n. Suppose in sub k is one of the non-negative solutions we found, like 8. Let's examine a new value, n equals the negative of n sub k plus 1. Substituting this into the triangular number formula, the two negative factors in the numerator will cancel each other out. This leaves us with the exact same expression for the nth triangular number, which we already know is a perfect square. Therefore, if in sub k is a solution, then in prime equals negative in sub k minus 1 is also a solution. This mapping is an involution. Applying it twice returns the original value. This accounts for all negative integer solutions. This gives us the negative solutions and equals negative 1, negative 2, negative 9, negative 50, and so on. In conclusion, a simple question about triangular numbers has led us to the deep structure of Pell's equations and number fields. We can now give the complete characterization of all integer solutions. All values of n come from this elegant structure. Positive solutions from powers of 3 plus root 8 and negative solutions from the involution mapping. For each solution, m can be positive or negative, giving us the complete family. The solutions grow exponentially, with consecutive pairs approximately multiplied by 5.83. From a simple question emerges infinite complexity and profound mathematical beauty. If you enjoyed this deep dive into number theory, please like and subscribe for more mathematical explorations. Also, feel free to suggest more problems you'd like to see solved.